World Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, go to worldfinancialgroup.com. the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creative. are necessary. You're going to have to start doing these things that are necessary because if you don't, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be left behind. We are in a full-on recovery, people. We're in a full-on recovery, a full-on recovery. You have to start taking advantage of these opportunities because if you don't, you're going to let them squander. And today's understanding is a breakdown for you to let you know. Here's how we're going to help you out. We're, we have started a brand new conversation, a real conversation around the subject matter and the topic of financial literacy. All right. So we're going to be doing it and we're going to be doing it now until the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, we're going to start with a whole new direction. But right now, it's all about making sure that you're recovering successfully and that you're getting the understandings that you need as appropriately as possible. And if you have still questions, further questions, please send them to Soul City Network. Send them to Leverage Credit Recovery. Send them to uh, Access Wealth Nation on Soul City Network. We have so many resources that we can help you with whatever the financial situation, circumstance, concerns may be. If you do your part, I've already said it before, and I'm going to constantly keep saying it. The experts are here. The experts are available, and they are wanting to help. So if you can't get out of your way because of whatever the circumstances and situations may be, that is now out of our control, and we want you to be financially successful. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about the financial future of the next generation. If you don't know, I'm a teacher. I'm a substitute teacher in a um, high school at this particular year or school year. And I'm also a financial coach when it comes to credit. I love the fact that credit has been one of those areas in which I've been able to literally dive deeper in than most of these companies that are out there. And I'm here to tell you with my 30 years of retail and the corporate America structure under my belt, 
it makes me literally very, very good with putting together the asset pieces of what we as individuals have and encompassing those with how we run and manage businesses, it's only going to make you that much more of a powerhouse. So as always, thank you, everybody. But again, we have connections. We have possibilities. We have so many things that will help you get to that next level. And if you want it, if you want it that bad, I'm telling you, we're already here. So let's dive on into the understanding of the next generation. So a conversation, necessary conversation, connect, correcting the narrative. As I said earlier, my name is Tyrone Glover. I'm the CEO of Leverage Credit Recovery. And we have now begun this conversation. And I'm just here to more or less let you know, you do what need be done, you're going to be okay. If you don't, if you do not, if you choose not to get out of your way, you're going to find it very challenging. And I'm just here to try to make it a little bit easier for you as best I possibly can. So with that being said, I have a question for all of you. Eat for a day or eat for a lifetime? Which is it going to be? Eat for a day. That means people are giving, 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 giving you. One day, one day you eat for a day or you can be taught, you can be educated, you can be smart, savvy, wise, and you can eat for the rest of your days. That's the choices that we have right now, folks. And I'm hoping that you are literally thinking long and hard as you are spending that money. You already spent it in November for the Black Fridays, the, all of the, the, the shopping excursions that you probably went on in November, and they probably served you rather well. But if inflation is 7.75, and two years ago, inflation was 1.3, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that range, in that range do you really think you're getting a deal? I'm just throwing that out there. I'm hoping that that actually resonated with some because it resonated with my students when I told them the same question. How are you getting a deal if inflation now has gone up six basis points? How are you getting a deal? You're just paying far more for the items that you could just more or less wait on until inflation came back down. But we're consumers. They picked the perfect word for us. They call us consumers for a reason. But I want you to think about that question. I would love it if you could drop some understandings into the comment section. If you, you know, again, want to engage, I'm always open and willing to satisfy whatever questions may come down that pipeline. All right. So a little bit about me before we begin. And everybody always asks, well, who are you? What do you do? Why are you such an expert? Well, again, my name is Tyrone Glover and I'm an enlisted Go Army veteran K-12 teacher, Corporate America executive by way of European studies with 30 plus years entrusted to me by 19 companies in the United States and abroad responsible for the well-being of employees and profit. I come with a lot of understanding, a lot of understanding. Yeah, don't let the young face fool you, but there is an older gentleman inside of this young body that you might be seeing, but I have a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot of experience. I've worked for some of the best companies and some of them which were questionable in their best practices, but overall, I was able to ascertain as much as I needed to ideally position me for this very moment in history. My clients, friends, coworkers, students, and family remember me for my extensive knowledge of credit, of, or excuse me, for credit advocacy and for credit activism. My commitment to consumer rights protection and pro se litigants' rights, that's what I live for currently is to make sure that every single person in the United States that might be going through some credit issues, some financial concerns due to our cust uh, excuse me, consumer rights, you have to now stand up for your own rights. If you don't, you have none. So the pro se litigate piece is only going to help you with getting the knowledge that you need so that you can go into court and successfully litigate your understandings as to what has happened with your credit profile or any financial matter for whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. I've done it. I've helped hundreds of individuals navigate the court systems, navigate Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, navigate what 
whatever there might be out there, removals, uh, 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 summary judgments, dismissals. I mean, what you don't know is going to continue to hamper and hinder you from the success that you can have. So I'm really imploring so many of you to, again, get out of your way. Get out of that way, because if you do, you're going to reap the benefits. I'm telling you now, if you do, you're going to reap the benefits. You're going to be able to walk away with more of an understanding as to how your financial situation will improve. It's only up to you now if you want it. If you don't want it, it's okay. If you want to wait a little bit of time, it's okay. But if you are serious about your financial understanding, today is the day. Tomorrow can also be the day. But by December 1st. And I'm going to give you a little bit longer because on the 3rd, which I'll show you my advertisement copy up here pretty soon. But on the 3rd of January, excuse me, of December, I'm going to be hosting another show at the library. Yes, it's on the elements in which I have molded into the understanding that, hey, we're going to have to do more. They're now opening up. They're now looking at Mr. Glover and going, hey, wait a minute, this guy's really on to something. And as I stated, we're in a recovery. We're in a recovery. The previous recoveries had lasted 16, 25, 19, six years. This recovery was about two. Now, we're not full out of it, but trust me when I tell you, we're in a recovery and we can benefit from this recovery. So from this day forward, our youth and students of all ages will have a voice and a seat at the table. I have attempted to help as many adults as I possibly can. Adults are set in their ways and they are very reluctant to that understanding of improving or learning more about their financial situations because we've already seen it in the way that they have been purchasing just in the last month. Just in the last month, I follow these markets extensively. That's why I can come to you with such passion about how I'm expressing the importance of what you're going to have to do. Because if you do what is necessary, trust me when I tell you, I'm telling you, you're going to profit, you're going to benefit, you're going to find other ways of improving in areas in which you thought were not even possible. All right, so let's keep it going. Let's keep it rolling. So the agenda, the financial future of this generation and beyond. So I have a question again, another question for you. The United States ranks 14th in the world in financial literacy. Why? Why? Why are we the strongest superpower as far as military, one of the best, if not the best economy? So why is it that we are 14th in the world when it comes to financial literacy? Think about that question. Again, think about two questions now, eat for a day or eat for a lifetime. And I want you to really start contemplating these. And I would love it. Send me an email. Chime in on the actual understanding now that we're doing. Do those pieces and allow for me to answer those questions. Because I'm telling you, the years that I have spent doing what I've been doing is only going to help those who want it. Because I tell you already, I'm helping myself. I'm making sure that everything that I'm doing is going accordingly. I have now literally reached out to every single one of my credit card companies and I've told them, you either get it right or we're going to see each other in court. Moving forward, I don't need any more of the understandings and excuses about this and that and so forth and so on. I had a call today from somebody doing a fishing expedition, throwing out the line, oh, we're looking for somebody named Sadie, Sadidi Glover. And I'm like, I don't know who that person is. So why are you calling my phone? Oh, well, they must have left. No, they didn't. You're doing a fishing expedition. That's what it is. Oh, the guy got right upset because he thought I was going to be one of those belligerent individuals. But guess who flipped the script on him and that guy became the belligerent one. All you need to know, all you need to do is be able to express in the manner in which it's going to allow for you to have the upper hand. That's all it is. It's going to allow for you to create the situations in which you're benefiting. Don't let others get in uh, or ahead of you thinking that they're doing more or something for you when in all actuality they're not. So it's really important that you start understanding why you are doing what you're doing.
So we're gonna keep it moving. Think about that question. Why? Why are we 14th in the United States? So here's some disturbing statistics that I always hate to bring out, but again, gotta have the good with the bad. And if you have both, it allows for you to have a more of a well-rounded understanding as to, are we doing the right things? Are we moving in the right manner? Are we making sure that everything that we're doing is okay? Because if it's not, we are going to have to make sure we do a better job. It's just that simple. We're going to have to make sure we're doing a better job. All right. So the as an Aspen Institute, and there's also an article here from the USA Today, 16% of suicides in the U.S. occur in response to a financial problem. That number, it, it, it actually startled me and it scared me for a little bit, too, because I was thinking, wow, 16% of suicides in the U.S. occur because of financial problems. That is that that that's alarming. That's alarming. We know we can do better. Further, reports states less than one fourth of youth, uh, you, uh, excuse me, young Americans age 18 to 26 are very optimistic about their financial future. I mean, we know, as I stated, if it was something that was in our K through 12, we would not be having these disturbing numbers. We would be able to make sure that individuals would prosper. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Also financial stability. But we know the Constitution wasn't or it didn't include a certain percentage of the population. And now I'm seeing that also equally the financial structure of this nation equally excluded a certain percentage of the population. So we have to do better on all levels of our understanding. On all levels. Every single level we have to do better. If we do better, we're going to obviously being a much better situation. So as I move through the slides, please, if you have any questions, concerns, or issues, please put those questions out there. I always like to ask this question because I don't know if we all know our states have financial literacy grades. So what's your state financial literacy grade? I am a New Yorker, and if you know the map like I know the map, that blue larger item up towards the right-hand side of the map, that would be New York, right in there. So this would be New York, right there, all right? New York has a D letter grade. That's pretty alarming, again, alarming. Why is it that a Democratic state, so D for Democrat, but why is it that we have such a poor understanding of how our money works? I don't get that. And I need someone. I need a legislator. I need some regulators. I need some elected officials. I need the individuals who are in charge and in control or this fictitious charge and control. I need you all to start stepping up and asking yourselves, why do we have such a bad understanding when it comes to our financial literacy? The National Report Card grade each state in the United States and the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico in terms of K-12 financial education. These grades are based on currently available states' wide requirements, standards, and curriculum for personal uh, finance. And these grades are pretty sad. All right, we have a very few states who have the A. Congratulations to those states, absolutely. But I don't understand uh, North Carolina, one of the poorest states. West Virginia, I believe that is there. Poor states. So who all in there is getting these wonderful understandings of financial literacy? Because it's great that you have an A grade, but are you serious about that A grade? And does it spread across all of the understandings within that community? But I'm, again, super happy that you got A's. I'm super happy about the B's. But I'm concerned about those states like California, New York, South Carolina, all of these other ones that have the D grades, Georgia, C grade, Florida, C grade. Uh, looking at these, F, Washington, D.C. has got an F. Alaska's got an F. Puerto Rico, F. I think that's one of the Dakotas. And if I'm not mistaken, that's South Dakota, F. Why are we not doing better? These are questions that you should be asking yourself. You're driving your kids' financial futures directly off a cliff if you do not start doing what is necessary.
Because if you do, you're going to be fine. If you do not, there's going to be concerns. There's going to be conditions. There's going to be issues that you're not going to be able to navigate around. All right. So financial literacy, what is it? Here's a little bit of an outlay of what financial literacy encompasses. All right. You got to have some objectives. You got to have some actions. You got to have a plan. You got growth, strategy, management, analysis. This all encompasses what financial literacy really entails. And if you start mastering some of these areas and start picking up on those other areas, guess what you're going to be before long? You're going to be financially literate. You're going to know all of the understandings, the key movements as to how you should be operating your money. It's just that easy. It's just that simple. Because if you do that, I'm telling you now, it's going to play out for you. It's going to play out to your advantage. And that's ultimately what you want. You want things to play out to your advantage. And if they play out to your advantage, why not take advantage of those understandings? All right. So what is financial literacy? The ability to understand and effectively use various financial skills, including personal man financial management, budgeting, and investing. That's it. That's financial literacy. Not that hard. Various financial skills, including personal management. You got to be able to manage your stuff personally first and foremost before you start going and out, out there thinking that, oh, I'm good to go. You manage yours at home first, then you are good to go. Focusing on your budgeting, making sure that you are connected to how you're spending and receiving your resources. And then that what's left over, put it into some investment understandings. All right. The meaning of financial literacy is the foundation of your relationship with money. And it is a long, a lifelong journey of learning. It's a lifelong journey of learning. It's just like that maze there. But it's a lifelong journey of learning. The earlier you start, the better off you will be because education is the key to success when it comes to money. Just that simple. Education is the key to success when it comes to money. And if you do what's necessary now, right now, if you do what's necessary right now, you're not going to have that problem later on down the road. If you don't, I can already tell you right now what's going to happen. And I'm literally going to be stunned if those of those individuals who look like me are not taking this serious. You look like me, even if you don't look like me, if you're Hispanic, those numbers that I'm getting ready to show you as to who does what is going to, it's going to, again, it's going to shock you. It's going to probably put you in a state of, oh my goodness, I have to do better. And as I stated, if inflation is 7.75 and two years ago, it was just below two, why are you shopping like crazy? Because my students, I asked this question to them and they say, well, if inflation's that high, well, shouldn't we be saving or shouldn't we be investing? Made the most sense to me. And these were kids, nine, uh, excuse me, 15, 16, 17. They're probably going to start asking you the same questions. And I hope they do. Because these kids are now more connected to their understandings prior, more than you are, which you should be way more connected to these understandings than your kids are. But our kids are now starting to show me. And here in Yonkers, so I'm talking primarily to Yonkers parents, they're starting to show me, hey, this stuff is going to change our lives. It's going to make us that much better of a productive citizen. It's going to give us back a voice. And it's going to allow for us to hold these elected officials accountable for their malfeasance if they're not doing what the people want. It's just that simple. If we start now, if we start at an early age, we'll be able to get in front of a lot of these concerns, situations that are now preventing us from the opportunities that we could have if we were better financially prepared. All right, so what are the various financial skills? So budgeting we talked about. I mean, we, we, we mentioned budgeting, we mentioned investments, and we mentioned personal financial management. So budget. A budget is an estimate of revenue and expenses over a specific time period over a future time over a future period of time and is usually compiled and reevaluated on a periodic basis. So that means you can't just write one budget and think it's going to last for the whole year, but if you have a small enough understanding, probably you could. 
If you follow it from month to month to month to month to month, yeah, that might be okay. But if you have something a little bit larger, a couple of more credit cards or a couple of more financial understandings or obligations that you must meet, you may need a little bit of a larger type of budgeting understanding that, again, must be evaluated on a periodic basis. If you do not know how to budget, you need to get with somebody who does. Once you figure it out, once you learn how to make it work on a regular basis, everything is cyclical. So that means you have to do this in cycles. If you do this in cycles, you're going to be so well-versed. Your financial literacy skills are going to improve because you've now addressed one of the key areas of financial literacy, which is budgeting. Investments. An investment is an asset or item acquired with the goals of generating income or appreciation. Appreciation refers to an increase in the value of an asset over time. Okay, that's just that simple. What we do not spend, we should be thinking about investing. What we do not spend on necessities, on the things that we need on a regular basis. We need shelter. We need clothing. We need nourishment. We need all of the basics, especially around the time frame when inflation is now going through the roof. The basics. Right? The basics. That's all you need is the basics. If you take care of the basics, guess what else falls in play? Yes. Everything else falls in play because then it leaves that room now. Now I can see, oh my God, look at all of this that I have left over. So now I'm going to take that what I had left over and I'm now going to put it into some investment opportunities. Investment opportunities. Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse is an ideal candidate to help anyone with these investment opportunities. Uh, Antonio Kenyatta, who I've mentioned on a number of occasions, is also equally someone who can help you with these investment understandings. But first and foremost, you got to get financial literate. You have to know how things work. Adding to that, obviously, is the personal financial management at a very basic level. At a very basic level, personal financial management simply means giving an understanding to your financial situations in order to make the most of your assets in day-to-day -day life and in planning for the future. Okay? The very basic level, day-to-day -day life and in planning for the future. That's what personal financial management means. We are setting our children up for failure. Black, African-Americans, Hispanics, the working poor, middle class, we're not doing enough of these three areas. And these are the basic ones. I'm literally, I'm imploring everyone to really start thinking about the next month, the next uh, excuse me, the January month as well, because February 1, I got plans. I got plans for anyone who has taken this opportunity serious. I got plans for you, February 1. I'm not going to put them out there. I'm not going to expose them yet, but I got plans for you. And I need you to get on board with this understanding, because if you do, your future is going to be set up for you for the rest of your days. If you do, if you do not, I am... I, I'm going to be so disappointed, not in me, not even in you. I'm just going to be disappointed that the messaging might not have been presented properly. So I'm going to need those of you who are listening to give me some more feedback, give me some more understandings. I get what I need from those who are, and I'm able to satisfy their understanding. But if I'm not meeting your understanding, I need you to reach back out to me. I need you to start including me in those conversations that you're having, but yet you're not getting those desirable outcomes or those answers. I can do a lot more with the assistance of those who really want to get out of their financial constraints. As I told you, my years of service have satisfied a variety of different entities. They have satisfied, I've watched hundreds of millions of dollars come in and out. I've been overseeing hundreds of millions of dollars in inventory. I've overseen hundreds of employees. I know probably you better than you know yourself when it comes to your financial knowledge, when it comes to how we as business people express and explain our understandings to, guess what? The regular Joe, 
the ordinary person. And you're not ordinary by no stretch of the imagination. You're extraordinary. But for some strange reason, you don't think that your finances can equally have that same extraordinary understanding. Now is the time, and we are giving you all of the tools and the resources that you're going to need to get to that next level. Bottom line, that's why we call this Leverage Your Score, because we're doing everything to help you leverage and get to that next level. So personal finance, a term that covers meaning your money as well as saving and investing. A term that covers managing your money as well as saving and investing. A term that covers managing your money as well as savings and investing. Now the savings piece, again, we are doing that. We're putting these stuff away into these 401ks, these 304Bs or whatever these acronym numbered items that are supposed to be saving our money. But are they really, are they really giving us the true bang for our buck? Well, if you don't know how the investing piece works, then really you're not getting anything. Why? Go to the bank. And I've, want, I've I, again, I've asked everybody to do this. Go to the bank and ask the banker, what are you getting when you put money into your savings account and your checking account? What are you getting? What type of a return are you getting on a daily what type of return are you getting in 20, uh, excuse me, thir uh, 365 days? 0 0.03 in your, sa in your checking and 0 0.04 in your savings. 0 0.03 in your checking, 0 0.04 in your savings. That's a whole lot of nothing. While you can do far better just by understanding how you can either personally manage or how you can hold those who are managing your money more accountable to your success. Oh, don't let the stock markets fool you. Don't let these situations with individuals who we have entrusted with our resources, don't let them sell you a lot of smoke and mirrors. Oh, ah, e, mm, uh, mm. For the last three and a half, four years now, I've been heavily invested in making sure that I understood the stock market. The last two, I've been actually putting a lot of, not a lot of the resources, but a lot of time into understanding how can I have a better grasp on managing my money so that I can ask those proper questions. And lately, I've been doing a phenomenal job at making sure those questions not only are getting answered, but that equally, they're not I'm not allowing them to walk away with, uh, mm, e, mm, can't answer that right now. No. You've been managing money for decades. Why can't you answer a basic question from someone who's just gotten into this? Okay. So again, the term that covers managing your money as well as saving and investing. Savings is good, but make sure you're getting enough bang for your buck. The investing is what's going to really give you, again, that bang for your buck. But if you don't know how to structure works, you're setting yourself up again for failure. You're setting yourself up again for failure. We need to get out of the control of others telling us what's going on and really have more control and understanding so that when somebody does give us some information, we're able to go, okay, applause, applause, or we're able to go, excuse me, one minute, that's not adding up. Could you go back to that and explain it to me like I'm four years old? All right, personal financial management. So what is personal financial management? Personal financial management at a very basic level, personal financial management simply means gaining an understanding of your financial situation in order to make the most of your assets in a day-to-day -day life and in planning for the future. We read that already. I just wanted to re-emphasize it because again, the very basic level. It's not telling you to go out and have to get a, a, an associate's or a doctor's or a master's or whatever the order in which they come. It's not telling you that. It's basically telling you get the basics. Understand the basics. Because if you understand the basics, the rest of it is actually not that complicated. But you need to start asking all of those who are managing your resources, you need to start asking them, hey, could you please break it down to me? Because I don't understand how 
the stock market could be doing X, Y, and Z. Your portfolios for your business are showing X, Y, and Z, but my returns are not nowhere near what I'm seeing. So help me understand how that works. But you got to know the very basics of your personal financial management. Once you do, the rest of it is going to be gravy. It's going to be, oh my goodness, such a wonderful understanding. I'm able to do what I need to do. I'm able to now start securing my financial future for not only myself, but if you have siblings, if you have brothers and sisters, if you have nephews and nieces, if you have your own kids, you're now able to structure out a financial management plan that's going to obviously succeed you and establish them on a positive understanding to outlive them as well. If we do what we need to do, the understandings of our finances will improve greatly. December is the time frame to do it, folks. If you're already out there shopping like you have no clue, I need you to start really thinking about this personal financial management. Buying the necessities is what you should be doing when inflation is that high. Force these so-called sale drivers Walmart's Targets, Amazon's, all of these individuals or companies out there promoting and putting out sales. Well, guess what? If inflation two years ago was one, uh, I mean, just below two, and now it's above seven, are you really getting a deal on that TV? Are you really getting a deal on that gaming console? Are you really getting a deal on all of the things that you're purchasing? Are you really getting a deal? You've heard of price gouging, right? You've heard of Maybe you haven't, but you've heard of situations where people take advantage of those who don't know. Well, I'm now informing you. Now you know. There's no more excuses. None. Zero. Stop. You want to get a control over inflation? Stop buying all of the unnecessary things. Force them to, re to bring those prices down. Force them. But if you don't, they're going to keep taking advantage of us. So to gain a more appropriate basic understanding of all which is entailed in setting yourself up for financial success, here are 10 reasons why financial planning is important. So your income, income and analyzing your income to know how much you will have to put towards basic expenses. Cash flow is a beautiful word, but do you understand what it means? Managing spending and planning ahead to make the most of your income. The more cash flow you have, the more after you've paid the understanding of your expenses, the more you are now able to put towards other opportunities. Capital, having left over cash as a result of managing cash flow, all right? Having left over capital, stuff that I can now say, whoo, I'm glad that I've been managing my money properly. So now I can start putting, diversifying these understandings with what's left over. Get away from discretionary spending on stuff that we do not need. Family security, understanding the need to address providing or providing for and keeping your family safe through insurance and other means. If you start doing this, Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse Access Wealth Nation on Thursday's ideal candidate for this particular area. Ideal candidate. She can help you with establishing those family securities that you know you're going to need. The investments. Now, the investment piece, Antonio Kenyatta. I can even help you in this, is, this regards as well. But as I stated, I like to stay in my own lane, and my lane is the credit lane. But what I've been able to ascertain and uncover for those who might be wanting to do a little bit of day trading or, again, as long as you're taking the proper risk management. 98% of my resources are never touched, never touched. I'm using 2% and I'm doing phenomenal. So making a plan to help your capital grow over time. That's what investments are. But if you're not investing, you're not making your capital grow over time. Standard of living, guaranteeing the most possible comforts due to prudent financial planning. That's all. Have a standard of living that allows for you to live as best you possibly can without overspending, without putting uh, money into unnecessary, I'm going to say, I'm not, I don't like to call it junk, but unnecessary stuff. Because that's what I say to my kids, my, my students all the time. Stuff. 
financial understanding, making use of your own decisions and results to better understand what works in your financial management plan. You have to understand these things. If you do not, you're walking around like a zombie. Assets acquiring valuable assets or investments with low risk and limited liabilities. I just talked about low risk. 98% of my resources are never touched by me. They are touched by others. And I'm now holding them accountable to make sure that I'm getting a bang, big bang from my buck. Can't keep giving people our money and they're giving us absolutely nothing in return. We have to make sure that whatever we give, we need to see a, again, somewhat of a larger than one or two or three percent. Dr. Yana B and myself equally have spoken about Rule 72. And if you don't know it, you might want to start taking a look at it because that's really important. That Rule 72 is going to put a lot of people back on the pathway to financial success. But if you don't know it, if you don't know how to address it, when it comes to those individuals managing your money, you're going to be finding yourself, again, decades of wealth have been stolen from about 60% of the population. Decades of wealth have been stolen all because of what we do not no. Yes, I'm going to call it theft because that's what it is. The entities that should have been protecting us haven't. The entities that should have been paying us a fair wage haven't. The entities that should have been making sure that all of our understandings were there haven't. So now, as I stated, the experts are now here and we're presenting to you in hopefully the most professional manner possible so that you can go, hey, you know what? I need to start reaching out. I need to start doing a little bit more to make sure that I'm protecting, again, not just yourself. If you have kids, you need to make sure that you're protecting them. If you don't have kids and you have siblings who have nephews or who have kids themselves, now you're an uncle or an aunt or great grandma or, or, or whatever, you need to start making sure that those things are taken care of for those individuals. If you do, you're going to be okay. They're going to be okay. But all of this comes with, again, all 10 of these understandings. Savings, having emergency cash on hand or stored in a highly liquidity investment. All right. So that's basically saying and high liquidity investment. That means something that is turning over and it's 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 giving you return after return after return after return. That's what this is supposed to be. That's what savings is supposed to be. 0 .03, 0 0.03 is not a high liquidity investment. That's not. That's, that, that's basically that falls under that savings where Bank of America... Chase, Wells Fargo, all of these large financial institutions, TD Bank, now a whole plethora of new financial concerns have popped up on the screen and on the scene. You got self, again, not reporting in the manner in which they should. They take your money and they create a CD. That CD is obviously making them money. And then at the end of it, they're giving you back what you had, but only just a small fraction of what they made. Like them, agree with their understanding, but again, they're taking more of my money and more of your money. That doesn't work, and it should never work. Um, what are the other ones? Cash App has, uh, not Cash App, uh, Credit Karma has now the same thing. There is Kava, I think that's what it's called. They have the same thing. There's a lot of these financial situations that have popped up due to the pandemic. And again, some of them are good. Some of them are okay, and some of them, I have to say, be careful. All right, so ongoing advice. Establish a relationship with a financial planner expert to set yourself up for a strong decision making. All right, so please, if you do those 10 things, easy peasy breezy, and you get that into a cycle where you got it going every, say, second to the seventh of the month or from the eighth to the 12th of the month. But you got to figure out a time frame to have this all work in cycles, cyclical. 
Because when you start with that credit card, that credit cards or those credit cards need to report properly. If they're not reporting properly, that means something's not being updated. So that means you're probably losing out in that area. And as I told you, starts with the basics. And the basics are these 10 items. Once you have mastered these 10 items, which should come almost pretty quickly, and you already have financial products with in your family structure, then it should be easy to put those into a platform that's going to allow for you to profit and benefit from every transaction that you do. Some of these items involve the same uh, specific types of financial management or strategies. However, understanding the, <clears throat> the significance of each of these points can help you to get a grasp of the full complexity and simplicity of a sound financial blueprint. Just that easy, just that important. So investments, an opportunity or item acquired when the goal of generating income or appreciation over time, all right? It's just, again, I keep saying it's just that simple because it seems like it's just that easy. And it is. It is. I'm seeing people do it all the time. I'm helping individuals get to that level all the time. And all it is is they got to get out of their way. They got to be open to being coachable. They got to open, be open to be taught. They got to be open to, again, not just listening to the beautiful words, but also requiring that we show them the results. But if we're not showing you the results, what is it doing? If you're not able to ascertain that, hey, I'm improving and I'm improving on such a level, the words don't mean anything. Actions must follow the words. And here at Leverage Credit Recovery, we want to make sure that you get actionable understandings. We're about recovering from a situation that we did not put out there, we didn't create, but we still have to recover from it. So an asset or item acquired with the goal of generating income or appreciation over time. So the seed has been planted and look at the tree that has been grown that's bearing the fruit. Oh, investments, investing and investing in you. All right. That's not that challenging. That's not even that hard. If you do that part, guess what's going to happen? You're going to invest in yourself. You're going to have the full understanding of what comes with your investment. If you do that part, if you don't do that part, guess what? Then there's nothing that you're going to get out of it. You're not going to reap anything. The benefits of are not going to be there. So it's really important that you understand the... Let me rephrase that. It's really important that you get behind your investments. Know how they're performing. Know what they're doing. Are you a buyer? Are you a seller? Know how you are making money. If you do not know how you're making money, somebody else is making money off of your money. That's all I wanted to put out there. If you do not know how your money makes money, somebody else is making money off your money. And you're going to have to do a better job. That's all I'm saying. You're going to have to do a better job. If you do a better job, guess what comes? Resources, returns. You get to move on to the next thing. So teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork makes the dream work. And that's uh, something that I always love to constantly keep repeating of how it gets better and better and better and better and better. And better with our understandings. I need it to So once we get this all going, once we get these understandings down, I want to talk about this right here, this investment statistic by race. The most common eth ethnicities among investors is obviously Caucasians, whites which makes up 73.2% of all investors. Comparably, there are 10.5 of the Hispanics or Latino ethnicities and 8.7 of the Black or African-American ethnicities. Those gaps are alarming. 73.2 versus 10.5, 
and 8.7. That, that, that should not work for anybody. That should not be an understanding that allows for you to sleep at night and going, wow, I'm doing such a great job. Because in all actuality, I don't think you are. At a very basic personal finance, financial management simply means gaining an understanding of your financial situation in order to make the most of your assets in day to day. I, again, I put it there three times because I need everyone to understand this graph here is telling you why we're not successful with our money. This pie chart tells you everything that you should know. We're going to have to start doing better in a lot of our financial understandings. And if we do, guess what's going to pay off? We're going to reap the benefits. We're going to reap the benefits of all of our hard work. And this is what we should be thinking about, folks, reaping the benefits for all our hard work. So here's the average age of an investor. All right, we're not starting. African-Americans don't really start until 40 or 44. Why? Why are we starting so late? I don't know. Maybe you can help me. Why are we starting so late? These questions must be answered. Latinos. I mean, roughly the age groups are no more than 10 years, but still, why are we starting so late? Oh, because we don't know about it because it's not being taught in our academic settings, not even being taught in some of the colleges, which it should be a ongoing from this point on k through 12 once you get out of high school your first understanding in uh whether you're getting that associate's degree or that master's degree or whatever it is that you're going to be working towards your investment understandings need to become equally a priority just like your credit that's what's going to grow the credit's going to allow for me to purchase at a much much lower interest rate depending on my ability to meet my contractual obligations my budgeting is going to allow for me to create more cash flow that I can turn into capital that I can now put into other investment opportunities. But I got to start at some point. I'm starting way too late. I'm starting when I'm almost at the retirement stage or age. Can you imagine if you started at 16 or 17? Oh, you would never have to worry about whether or not I'm going to have a retirement package from my employer. I'm going to need a 401k that's not turning over in the manner in which it should. And the very individual who actually designed the 401ks pretty much came out and said, 401k, ha ha. <laughs> laughing now, laughing now. Because you're putting it into a stock market that you yourself don't understand. Others are capitalizing off the masses of money that goes into from these 401k understandings, but they're capitalizing and you're complaining that it's not turning over for you enough. An investment requires putting capital to work in the form of time, money, efforts, etc., in hopes of a greater payoff in the future than what was originally put in. Please, again, a greater payoff in the future. So they can't keep telling us, oh, well, this month, oh, well, this year, oh, well, the last five, oh, well, the last 10, oh, well, oh, well, you, the managing bodies of my resources have not been doing the proper job. But I'm going to hold myself equally accountable to say, well, I haven't done my part, which is understanding what your part is. Once you do, guess what? All done, all said and done. So the degrees, you can see 72% bachelor's degree. So those with bachelor's, thank you. Because you guys have already figured out, hey, I got to start investing. But as you get up there and then also those lower understandings, associate, 9%, got to change these numbers. Master's degree, got to change these numbers. So you got the job at the master's degree, but yet you figured, oh, well, I got all these other protections. I don't need to make sure that I understand how they work. High school diploma, 3%. Other degrees, 4%. These numbers are abysmal and every single one of us, excuse me, we should be thinking about what we got to do. Income gap and investment can refer to any medium or mechanism used to generate future income, including bonds, stocks, real estate, property, and alternative investments. So look at the investment gap. Look at the African-Americans. 
Now that's a great salary, 107,000, but still look how low we are compared to all of the other ethnic groups. So where do investors earn the most? Well, that uh, Pierce County, Washington looks relatively, relatively good, but obviously we're going off of the greenish areas. So in Alaska, a lot of earning going on there. New York, a lot of earning. Yonkers, we're right around here somewhere. White Plains, Mount Vernon, New Rochelle. We do good in this area. Why? Because Westchester County is the 10th richest county in the nation. 10th richest county in the nation. All right? And that's why. So why are those resources not making it across all understandings who live in this wonderful state we call New York? And as you can see, East Coast generates a lot more understanding than Midwest or even the West Coast. But again, West Coast does pretty well for itself. All right. More than enough opportunities out there, more than enough for us to do what we need to do. The question is, do you want it and how bad do you want it? So budgeting is also one of those key important elements. An estimation of revenue and expenses over a specific future period of time that is reevaluated on a periodic basis. That's all. Nothing more. You do that, you'll be fine. Budgets are also cyclical. You got to work on your budgets, people. You got to make sure that your budgets actually do what they're supposed to do, which is work. If they do not work, are you benefiting from a budget that doesn't work? Very simple. If you're benefiting or not benefiting from a budget that doesn't work, guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to find yourself in a situation where you have not done enough and you're going to find yourself short. And that's what we need to do to improve that we're not leaving ourselves vulnerable and unprotected. And we'll talk more about budgeting in our next upcoming shows because there are cycles that you have to meet to make sure that things are getting reported properly. So why, what is a budget? A budget is an estimate of revenue and expenses over a specific time, uh, future period of time and usually compared with reevaluating a on a periodic basis. Budgets can be made for a person, a group of people, a, bu a business, a government, or just about anything else that makes. To manage your monthly expenses, prepare for life unpredicted events, and to be able to afford big ticket items without getting into debt. Budgeting is important. Keeping track of how much you earn and spend doesn't have to be be requires you to be good at math and doesn't mean you can't buy the things you want. So none of that really has any precedence. It just means that you'll know where your money goes. You'll have a greater control over your finances. That's what budgeting means. It just wants you to know where your money goes so that you will have a better understanding over your finances. So, folks, that's it. That's what we do. We do it so good, and it goes so fast, and I love the fact that everyone always gives me more than enough of their understanding because later on, I noticed that as I post these on my social media pages, you guys respond very favorably. So thank you so much for going back after the fact and taking a look at a lot of these previous shows, and I want you to not only just do it for mine, but do it for my colleagues who equally are on Soul City Network because this is a family and this family loves to help and send out as much valuable information that we possibly can. If you're not watching those other shows, please definitely tune in on Soul City Network. There are great, great, great providers of content and they're doing exactly as we, those of us who look like us need. So it's really important. So if you want to get in touch with us, telephone number is 805-428-9424. The email, I have a link tree, leverage credit recovery, link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E forward slash leverage credit recovery. That was our new email address is under our link tree. A lot of great things from link tree. You ever get on there, scroll down, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And the website is leverage credit recovery at gmail.com. Leverage credit recovery at gmail.com.
www.thebrewingcoffee.com. I want to thank you, everybody. You can find us on the variety of different social media sites. Like us, follow us, join. I'm telling you, you're going to get a lot of what you thought you were never able to have an understanding of. We're on TikTok, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, and I think that one is, I can't remember. Oh my goodness, I always draw a blank on that one. They really don't use it that much, but I should. Snapchat, there we are, thank you. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for always giving me that understanding that what I'm doing for you is actually paying off. It's really, really cool to know that I get the time and the space that is provided from Soul City Network and that you, the viewer, that you're always there, that you're always giving me the understanding of what I need to present to you. Please continue to keep sending me the emails. Please continue to keep watching the later shows as we put them on our social media and on our link tree. Please do what you need to do in this next couple of days because as of December 3rd, yours truly is going to be at the public library here in Yonkers doing what he does best, which is offering a once a month, leverage your score, creating the necessary conversations, helping the next generation. We're going to be talking a lot about making sure that you have what you need for this upcoming recovery. 2023 is going to be a recovery, folks. We're in it. We're almost on the tail end of it, and we still could teeter, you know, but I'm telling you now, if you're not in where you need to be, then you're not going to reap the benefits of what you probably want. My name is Tyrone Glover, everybody. I appreciate you, adore you, and love you. I want you all to be safe in your travels. Please protect everyone in those households. We love you. We appreciate you. Until next time, America, be safe. We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the teacher. We are the creator. We are here.